Okay, thank you. When you are in a block house and three story building, four story building, and then it can go even higher. How will you love for somebody to assemble blocks? No cement, no mortar, just one block on top of the other. And after assembling them, it gets to the first floor, it will use plank or metal and put across. Nothing holding it. Then it will start assembling blocks on top of blocks. He gets to the next floor, he puts planks or metal. Then he starts again. After four floors, how would you like to live in such a house? There is nothing holding it. There is no foundation. There is no glue. Do you know the role cement plays between one block and another? Between one stone and another? That's what covenant does between one human being and another who want to come into partnership. I stood up because the Lord said, I should illustrate this. You have not gotten it. In your body, in your body, there are different parts, different organs. Do you know? One of you pastors, come. I'm going to use him for illustration. Can you see this man? There is hand here. There is another hand here. And this hand is hanging. Why hasn't he fallen off? I'm going to pull you. Pastor, no, come and pull him on the other side. Two of us are going to struggle for this man. Let's tear him apart. Pull him with force. Oh, yeah. Ah, you are stronger than me. <laughs> pull, pull, oh. Why didn't this hand fall off when all this pressure was mounted? Between this hand and the shoulder, there is a socket where the thing is joined. Eh? But it's not just the socket. If you did anatomy, I, went, I, I tried to study medicine, but I didn't end up there. Don't worry. Every time I travel, one of the places I go and visit Atlanta, everywhere in the U.S., is bodies. Where you go, you watch different parts of the human bodies, but dried up like starfish. So you can see. If you did anatomy or have any understanding of biology, you will know that. Between bones and bones are things called tendons. They are the toughest part of meat. When you're eating beef, the soft meat is easy to eat. The bones are hard. But there is another type of meat. When you put it, you chew and chew, it refuses to. It's called tendon. It is the gum, the cement. God used to hold bones together. It's also tendon that is holding your muscles to your bone. You start cutting, it's muscle, muscle, muscle. When you get to where it meets the bone, a line of tendon comes in that holds. If not, why hasn't your muscle turned off? You need this super glue from heaven to hold your marriage, your family, to hold your business, to hold churches. And we need it to hold a whole society. If we bring it, we can kill all this tribal tension that is trying to tear Nigeria apart. Because we can build a strong nation where there will be justice, where there will be peace, where there will be fairness to everyone. God bless you, sir. You are getting it. You are getting it. Lift up your hand. Tremendous anointing is falling here. The glory. Because this is why God comes down. This subject. Every time you see the subject of altar in the Bible is a place of cutting covenant. Hey. The owner of this house has arrived. He said, I should tell you that he made a covenant with you, but you are not aware of it. That's why you are suffering. That in that covenant, there are certain benefits that belong to you. There are things that are your rights. Nobody has any power to deny you those rights. No devil has any right to rob you of those rights. 
Lift up your hands and tell him, Lord, I give you my all. I enter into another level of relationship with you. If you see the things Domino City is doing, it is not normal. There is no way to explain it. The whole world is in a lockdown and we are doing things that people don't do. Even ministries don't do under normal time. I can't say them on air. If you hear, but covenant, 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 covenant. Doesn't matter if the whole world is in famine, God will make sure you have food. It doesn't matter if the whole world is going that God will make sure you are protected. It doesn't matter if the whole world is turned upside down, God will make sure that there is foundation under you. It doesn't matter if the whole, there is famine or recession in the whole world, there is no job, God will make sure that you are doing well because it's not just if he like or if he doesn't like, there is commitment, there is obligation, there is commitment between you and him. Can I hear you say amen? Can I hear you say it like thunder? The reason you can never find me stagnating, you can never find me moving back, is that there is blood between me and the Almighty God. Can you imagine having a covenant with your president and you're hungry? He will lose power if he violates that covenant. Do you know that if God is to break his covenant, that he will lose the power of his throne? He will give Satan power that Satan didn't have. The devil will have the ability to accuse him for the first time that he's a liar. God is a covenant keeping God. When it comes to faithfulness, he is impeccable. He is infallible. He is undeniable. Kabos! Isaiah 63. When God made a covenant with the children of Israel, I want you to see what the Bible said from verse 1. Verse 7. Verse from verse 7, yes. From verse 7. And I will mention the loving kindnesses of the Lord and the praises of the Lord according to all that the Lord has bestowed on us and the great goodness towards the house of Israel which he has bestowed on them according to his mercies. You see, part of what God does is he showers kindness. He showers his mercies. Actually, according to the Bible, wherever God has covenant, he renews his mercies every morning. He renews his kindness every morning. He renews his faithfulness every morning. In other words, he doesn't say, I bless you yesterday. When the next day comes, he starts blessing as if he has not done before. When he finishes that day, he forgets that day. The next morning, he starts afresh like somebody who fell in love for the first time. Yes, go ahead. Verse 8. eight. For he said, surely they are my people, children that will not lie. So he was their savior. You see, part of the reason God goes into covenant with people is that he also trusts that you will come to play games with him. You will come to lie or deceive him. Because you can't deceive God. God is faithful. So he wants faithfulness from the people he's dealing with. Yes, so verse, verse 9. In all their affliction. He was afflicted, and the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and his pity, he redeemed them, and he bare them and carried them all the days of old. In all their afflictions, God Almighty was afflicted. If the children of Israel are in pain, God is in pain in heaven. And he would do something to get them out of it. If they are crying, he starts crying. Because covenant unites two people into one. In all the affliction, he was afflicted. And he sends the angel of his presence to deliver them. 
and he will carry them like a, a mother carries his nursing baby on, his, on the shoulder across. That's what he did for the children of Israel. That's how he brought them out of Egypt. Let me show you Exodus chapter 2 verse 23. So you see, when the Egyptians started oppressing them and Pastor Ben, this is because he made covenant with Abraham or it was when Moses brought them out of Egypt, brought them to Mount Sinai, that they as a nation entered into covenant with God. What was working here is that God was remembering the covenant he made with Abraham. And this is the fourth generation of his descendants. Abraham gave birth to Isaac. Isaac gave birth to Jacob. Jacob gave birth to the 12 patriarchs. Joseph, Judah, and his brothers. And those ones brought their, the next generation. At the fourth generation, the Egyptians tried to oppress them. The contract God signed four generations ago was so powerful that he remembered it. Verse 23, yes? And it came to pass in process of time that the king of Egypt died and the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage. Now, the, the king of Egypt died, the one that knew Joseph, another pharaoh rose that did not know Joseph. Instead of oppressing the children of Israel, and they were crying because of their bondage. And what happened? And their cry came up to God because of the reason of their bondage. You want to enslave a covenant people? Can you see how God destroyed Egypt with ten plagues and brought his people out? Why did he do it? If somebody is trying to oppress you, why hasn't he done something? Are you walking in covenant with God? If you start covenant relation with God, somebody touches you. Do you remember what he said in the Bible? Anyone that touches you touches the apple of my eyes. Because when covenant is established, it turns the two people into one. It's like if you touch somebody's wife. The man will kill you now. The, their cries came up to God by reason of their bondage. What happened? Verse 24. And God heard their groaning. And God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. Do you see when God heard them crying, he remembered the covenant he made with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And verse 24. One more line. I think this is enough, but yes, yes. And God looked upon the children of Israel and God had respect unto them. And of course, that's why he appeared in the burning bush. Set a bush on fire. Moses was passing. He said, Moses, Moses, stop there. Pull off your shoe. Where you stand is holy ground. He said, throw that rod down. He turned to serpent. He said, with signs and wonders. And he called him. He said, Go. I have heard the cries of my people in Egypt. I've seen their affliction and I have come down to deliver them. He said, when I go to them and tell them that you sent me and they ask me, who is he? Tell them he's the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob for that is my name forever. When I cut covenant with Abraham and his son Isaac and Jacob, they have right to bear my name. You know what happens when a woman, you can take a girl from the poorest home. She might even be living in a dustbin in Enugu. And you bring the prince of England and he falls in love with that village girl and espouses love to her. That one is big. The fact that God loves us. But he now goes one step further to seal that love with marriage covenant. The moment he finishes, the first thing that happens is that that lady loses her father's name. She starts bearing the royal name. They, against the royal name. It's put on her. Ladies and gentlemen, that's why you guys need to know that the name of Jesus was given to us as an inheritance. It's actually your son's name. <laughs> The Bible said May, they will surname themselves by the name of the Lord. Then the next, did you notice what God did with Abraham? He did it with Sarah. Every time he meets a man, he's entering into covenant, he changes the man's name. He said, what is your name? Abraham. He said, no, 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 good, not good. 
Your name from now shall be Abraham, Prince. You are a prince, you are a ruling power. When he got to Jacob, he said, No, 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 your name shall not be called Jacob anymore. Your name shall be called Israel. Israel means prince of power with God. You rule with me from my throne. People see you here, but you have another controlling influence from the realm of the spirit. Is that not what Jesus gave us? That when he rose up, he took you and I up and made us to sit at the right hand of the heavenly places in Christ. Far above principalities and powers and dominion and every name that is named. Excuse me, when the prince marries that village girl and returns to England and then he sits on his throne, where will the lady sit in the congregation? No, sir. Where, does the, where does the queen normally sit? Why is the church seated at the right hand of Jesus? Because the church is the wife, the bride of Christ. You are not ordinary people anymore. You are not that old person that came from your village. You are not that little person that your parents born. You are now part of royalty. Covenant has conferred royalty on you. Can I hear an amen? amen? Let me also ask. That little girl that came from the village that is very poor, can't even afford to pay school fees. The moment she is married into the royal family, what happens to her? It's not just change of status. probably become the one maybe the weirdest woman in Nigeria she automatically gains British citizenship even if she still wants to parade herself as a Nigerian she's now a full-fledged British citizen and she's on the, from the royal family these are the things that covenant gave you and I and then at that moment all of the wealth of the prince is now hers. You won't see her jumping more, Lua, jumping buses anymore. They will carry her with royal. They treat her with royalty. If she was a member of your village, a com for your community, before nobody knew her, when she returns to your community, your traditional ruler will come out to come and welcome her. Your governor will come to come and work on her in the airport. I declare to you today, your status have changed. You see this visit, I came to this city. Everything that has been troubling you, that has been hindering you, today marks the end and the termination of all those obstacles. In the name of Jesus! Those sicknesses that have held you today marks their termination in your life. In the name of Jesus. Pastor Ben, let me ask you. If that little girl, village girl had any infection or sickness, what happens to her after she marries the prince? They would take her to the best medical hospital, the best treatment available in the world and give it to her. What do you think the prince of heaven that came down that came and married you shed his blood for you what do you think he's ready to do leave you sick leave you to be dying the bible said he that gave his son for us and did not spare him how shall he not with him freely give us all things please put it up I want them to see it in the bible he said if God sacrificed his son for us because of that, he will freely give us all things. Romans chapter 8, put it up. Pastor Ben, read it for us. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? How many things? All things. How many things? All things. How many things? All things. Can you imagine being married to the royal family and say, car is my problem. I can't afford a car. Can you be married into the royal family and be complaining, I can't send money to my parents. 
Do you know that your parents have become in-laws to the royal family? That their status is changed. The mud house in the village is about to be knocked down and a new property. And I want to prophesy to many of you here. That building in your father's house that has been lying desolate is about to be rebuilt. It's about to be rebuilt. In the name of Jesus. Pastor No, is it not what the Bible said? He said, they that be of you shall rebuild the old waste places. They shall raise up the former generation. They shall repair ruined cities. If we can repair cities, nations that are ruined, failed state, what about our own father's house? Listen, lift up your hands. There is an anointing upon me for restoration. Ayagababo. We're going to take a lot of people out of poverty and give them their own houses. What is all this? You are God's children. Can I hear you say amen? amen. Leave those hands and give him praise. Leave those hands and give him praise. Who told you there is lockdown? There is no, the kingdom, the economy of the kingdom is not under lockdown. I said the economy of the kingdom is not under lockdown. What you need to understand is covenant and the passcode, the code. Are you hearing what I'm saying? What is lockdown about British royal family and their economy? Eh? What's lockdown? Say with me, I belong to royalty. The king of the universe and his family. I'm a member of that royal family. When the Bible sometimes will talk to us about it, say you are royal priesthood. You are not just priests, you are loyalty. Can I hear you say amen? You are a peculiar people. He said, you are kings and priests. Lift your hands and praise him for it. I declare the end of hardship and poverty in your life. In the name of Jesus. Yahweh, covenant-keeping God. Yahweh, covenant-keeping God. Oh, you are, you are, covenant-keeping God. Oh, you are, you are, covenant-keeping God. Yahweh, Yahweh. never leave me 